So, all right, so I'm looking at systems of inequalities. Um, and again, like I said, we're doing systems of any type of inequalities. It could be linear, it could be nonlinear. So I'm going to do a couple of examples. And let's see, the first example that I want to do is this one. So x plus 4 the quantity squared plus y minus 3 the quantity squared is less than or equal to 9. And x plus 4 the quantity squared plus ooh, y minus 3. I'm gonna, sorry, change my example. Nope, don't want the same one twice. Sorry, guys. Sorry, don't want that one. I thought I was picking a good one. I'm going to do this one. Why are they making this so easy? Hold on. This is a bunch of crap. Okay, let me redo. Let me start. Um, so here's the example I'm going to do. x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 16, or x plus y is greater than 2. So this one is good because I have two different types of, of inequalities to graph. So we'll call this inequality 1, and we'll call this inequality 2. And looking at this inequality 1, you want to be able to obviously know what the graph should look like because you have to graph them to solve these systems. So I'm looking at this, and it looks like a circle, right? It's an equation of a circle with the center at the origin, and the radius is the square root of 16, which is 4. And this one looks like a line, linear equation, um, and you can graph this any, any way you want. You could use, um, <coughs> excuse me, intercepts, or you can use, you know, put it in slope-intercept form and then use the y-intercept and the slope. That's a preference. I'm going to go straight to intercepts because when I'm in standard form, if this were an equal sign, it's easy to find my intercepts. If I set y equal to 0, I'm sorry, if I set x equal to 0, right, this term goes away, I get y is 2. And if I set, you know, y equal to 0, this goes away, I get x is 2. Okay, this is again graphing the corresponding equation, right? If this were an equal sign and this were an equal sign. So, you know, we're, we're basically thinking about the corresponding equations first, then we're going to talk about the inequalities. But after we do the equations. So let's, um, let me go ahead and set up my I want white. What is going on? Okay, here we go. <laughs> white, white, that's better. Ah, I like that I can make beautifully straight lines with this thing because I can't do that by hand. This is my y axis and this is my x axis, right? Label everything nice and neat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't know how much I'll need. One, two, three, four. Try to be, you know, as t perfect as you can, if you can be. Nobody's perfect, but you know. Anyway. Okay, label everything. All right, cool. Let's start with the circle. The circle is centered at the origin and has radius 4. So from the center, I'm going to go up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, and have a point. Go to the right 4. Go down 4 and go to the left 4, right? Because the radius is the distance from the center to any point on the circle. Now I'm going to do the best that I can to graph a up. Ooh, pause. Why did I pause? I do not know if I want to connect this with a solid curve or with a dotted curve. This is where it changes for inequalities versus equations. When you're graphing you know, an equation, you make a solid curve or make a solid line. Because you're including the points that exist on that as part of your solution set. When you're graphing an inequality, not every inequality includes the points that lie on the line or the curve. Now this says less than or equal to. That means that all the points such that I plug in my x and my y and I get situations that are less than 16 are solutions. Or if I plug in points here and I get situations that are equal to 16, those are all solutions. Anything that makes the left less than or equal to 16. So the equal part is included, which means um, when I have the you know, less than or greater than or equal to part, I do a solid curve. It's a solid curve, 
okay? This is important when you're doing inequalities because it depends. Are you including the values on the curve or are you not? Here I am, so now I can go ahead and finish my curve. Now it's like, ah, it's a little better. <laughs> okay, okay, look at, look at, look at, okay, perfect. All right, so now we're prettier. Are we happy? We're happy. Okay, we feel better. It's curved. <laughs> they were making fun of me, saying that I uh, diamond-like and not curved. Cool. All right, now we're looking pretty. It's a pretty circle. Cool. Now, I'm back at it. I want to determine the points that make the left less than 16 as well. So what I do is I say, take a test point. Because um, sometimes it's easy to determine what is what, and sometimes it's hard to determine. If you can't determine which side to shade, use a test point. If you can use the origin, use it. It makes your life easy. The origin I can use. And if this point works in the inequality, then it is a solution. So everything else on the same side as that test point is also a solution. If this doesn't work when I plug it in, then it's not a solution. So therefore, everything on that side is not a solution. And I would shade the opposite side. So I plug in 0, 0 here, 0, 0 block. I get zero on the left, right? Zero squared plus zero squared is zero. Is less than or equal to 16, is that true? This is a true statement, which means that this origin is a solution to this particular, just looking at the first inequality, it is a solution, which means that I shade the side that includes it, which is basically inside the circle. Now, I don't wanna go crazy with shading because you're looking for an intersection of two shaded regions as the solution to the system. So you don't want it to be too ugly, okay, um, when you actually are shading. Don't go crazy. <laughs> okay, let me do the next one, which looks like a line, and that's easy because I have the two points. So 0, 2 is one point, and 2, 0 is the other one. And I'm going to use my lovely line thing so that it's a perfect line. <laughs> and before I do that, I want to ask you... Uh, how do I connect these points? So is it going to be a solid line or is it going to be dotted? That's very important because, yeah, because I want to know if I'm including the values on the line or not. And in this case, you see that it's greater than but not equal to. So only the stuff that makes the left greater than the right is part of my solution set. So this is going to be a dotted line or dotted curve in other scenarios, this, a line in this case. Um, let me make sure. Purple, okay? So when I connect these dots, can I do it? See, look at that. You guys are making me... Okay, dotted line. See, fancy. Okay, go me. Dotted line. <laughs> but I'm not done because I want to determine which side... <laughs> Which side, which side is actually the side that I am shading that includes the solution set because it's an inequality. So again, I can pick 0, 0. So if 0, 0, which is on the bottom of this line, if it is a solution that it is, you know, then I shade this part. But if it is not a solution, then I shade the other part. So let me plug it in here. 0 plus 0 is 0, is greater than 2, right? Plugging it in just to the second inequality. This is not a solution set, which means that this side is not my solution set. The uh, other side is, so I'm going to shade above it. Now, I'm not done, right? Because the actual solution to the system is the intersection of the two shaded regions, which is why you don't want to go crazy shading. And in this case, the intersection is just this and this part. Everything inside this little piece of the circle, not including the stuff on this line, but including the stuff on the circle are all solutions to the system and therefore I am finished and it is a beautiful graph, okay? <laughs> and that is how we solve a system of inequalities, okay? Again, it could be anything. It could be parabolas, it could be circles, it could be lines, but you can, but you can um, always determine which side to shade by using a test point. If your test point works, shade the side that includes it. If it does not, shade the opposite side if you have a less than or greater than or equal to, then it's solid. If it's, if it's not equal to, then you're having a dotted line. 